this is Anne. I wanted to do a quick cake topper tutorial today. Um, how to create like an offset and just make a simple, simple, simple cake topper. Show you how to customize the colors and all of that good stuff. So this is one of those new, um, I feel like the new types of rainbows that we're seeing where it's like a little bit funky with the shapes. Um, so let's just get started. So the reason why I wanted to show you this is even though there's not a lot going on in this cake topper, there's going to be a lot of layers. The clouds are going to be in the back and they're going to be stacked on top of each other. So there's three clouds and I'm going to move this so you can see what the clouds look like. Um, let's grab some clouds so I can show you what that looks like. I'm going to bring the clouds and arrange center to the front so you can see what it looks like. So they're going to be like this. So this is going to sit on top of this one and this one. And that's just going to give you a little bit of, you know, some like 3D feel, like some dimension to it. And these clouds, they're going to sit in the back, right? Arrange, oops, sorry. Arrange, send to the back. And what's going to happen is you're going to have the clouds kind of stacked like this. Then you're going to have your dowel, like so your, you know, your wood cake topper pieces and then your rainbow. So already you have a little bit of depth between the clouds, the stick, and then your rainbow. And then from the rainbow on, which is all these colors, the one and the Matthew, that's going to give you many more layers as well. So you're going to have a range of layers, even though this looks very simple with just a, some clouds and rainbows and the name, right? Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to show you how to do all that. Let's go to images. Let's find this rainbow. The important thing about the rainbow is I'm not going to go into dis, um, go into Inkscape to create the offset. Okay, so let's look. I like this rainbow. Let's click on this rainbow, insert images. And for this particular request, it was like different shades of blue. So this is going to be easy. Um, you know what? I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to flatten it for a second. So that way it's going to be one image. Um, just so that we don't see it with, get confused with these over here. So here's our rainbow, right? So let's change these colors. You just click on it. You know, we're going to go with various shades of gray and blue. So I'm clicking each one and changing the colors. So you can see that they're getting changed, right? So here's our rainbow. The problem with this rainbow is we don't have a background, right? These are single pieces. So five little curvy pieces, five upside down U's basically, right? So the way I would do this is I would grab this one and duplicate it. So here's this one, right? It's, it's, this, I'm going to un unlock it and I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger to give me that offset that I want. Okay, so here it is. I'm gonna arrange and send to the back. And let's change that color. Let's change it so that we can see it better. Um, let's change it to this gray. So you can kind of see it gave us this offset, right? And you're thinking, well, that doesn't necessarily help me yet, but it does because what you'll do then, oops, let's keep that. What you want to do with this is go ahead and bring in a circle and unlock it. Let's just flatten it a little bit like this, okay? And we can just put it down here. Don't worry about this right now. We're just kind of like fixing things. We're going to grab these two items and weld. And then now if you go to contour, we can, with contouring any enclosed space, we can get rid of or we can uh, fill it, right? So watch, if you click hide all, now I have this solid background, okay? So now I'm gonna bring a range send to the back and see it gave me, it filled it in and I can change that to, let's change it to a white just so that it doesn't look so crazy. So. You see, now I have an outline. I have things for these upside down U's to stick on, so it's easy for me to piece together. Don't worry about this bottom part because we're gonna bring in clouds and we're gonna bring in the name. So now with the name, 
I'm gonna go to Font Lab Pad, okay? You need to download this because look at, I'm gonna go to File and we're gonna have recent fonts, right? So I'm just gonna pick some fonts. Um, let's say we use Southmore. Do you see how it connects all the letters for you? So I'm gonna do Matthew. It connects everything, the two T's and the file save as, and this is Southmore. So I'm gonna save it as Southmore, oops, Matthew, and it's an SVG file, right? So I'm gonna go to Inkscape right now. This is also something that you should download. It's free, both Font Lab Pad and Inkscape are free. So there's no reason why you shouldn't get it. Um, what happened? I thought I had Inkscape on. Oh, I didn't spell it right. Like, I have this on my file. Okay, so I'm gonna open up this app. I'm gonna show you how to create the offset. You need to learn how to create offsets because it, it's a game changer for projects. It really gives that finishing touch that you need to, um, one, for it to, uh, just from an eye, it's easier to read and see things with the different layers. And then two, it gives you that finished touch of like a really high quality, nice project that you could buy on Etsy. Okay, so here is Inkscape, right? We're gonna go to File, um, Import, and we're gonna import our image. So we saved it on our desktop and it was Southmore, right? What did I name it? Here it is. Southmore Matthew. So I'm gonna open and just click OK. So here's my name. It's unlocked right now. I wanna lock it so that I can make it big so that we can work on it and see it without killing our eyes. But you wanna lock it because just like Design Space, then it gets bigger proportionately. All right, so here's Matthew. I'm gonna click in this empty space because that was selected, right? I don't want anything selected. I'm gonna go to Paint Bucket. I'm gonna pick any color, and then I'm gonna grow my offset by 20. So when I click on this A, you see how it gave me that offset? Click on the arrow, click in the empty space, click on my Paint Bucket. I want another layer. I'm gonna pick another color and I'm gonna grow my offset by 40 this time. And when I click on this, it gets bigger, right? Okay, click on your arrow, grab everything, go to path, object to path, file, save as, and we're saving as Matthew offset sophomore. And we're gonna go into Cricut Design Space, upload, Upload image, browse, and you're gonna go find your file, right? So, uh, what did I call it? Shoot, um, my mind. Matthew <laughs> Offset Southmore, okay. Double click on it, save. Click on it here, and then insert image. So now we have this name, right? So we're going to work on this. Let's ungroup it. Here is our backmost layer, right? I don't like this little hole. I'm going to go to contour. Actually, I don't like any of the holes. I'm going to click hide all and it's going to give me this full background, okay? Then here's my next layer. I'm going to arrange, send to the front just so that it will sit on top of my thing. And if I like this, the only thing that I might not like is this right here, because I feel like it's going to cut my paper and it could ruin it. So I'm gonna go to contour and I'm gonna get rid of that little cut right there. I'm gonna select on it. And then it's gone. And then here's my final layer. I, okay. I'm gonna change this color really quickly to something lighter so we can see it, okay? And then I'm gonna ungroup it and I wanna show you why you need to weld it, okay? So I'm gonna bring this M to the front for a second. 
If you don't weld the name, the letter M is gonna cut all the way through like a single M, then the A is gonna cut around it, so you see it's not a, flu a fluid piece, right? And then check this out. I'm gonna send this to the front. My T is gonna cut through the H. That looks horrible, right? It's gonna cut here and here. It's gonna look really bad. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab all of Matthew and you want to weld it. When you weld it, you change. See how all these are individual pieces? Those were individual letters. Matthew is now one line. It is one object, and it's nice and fluid. That's what we want. So this is going to go on top like this, right? So sticking with the theme, you know, you want to change your colors. So I always like to do dark, light, dark, light. Like you want to alternate it so that you, the colors really pop and play on each other. So if I did like a blue, then my second layer, I'm going to do white. And then my back layer, maybe I'll do a gray. Something like this. Okay, so now I'm going to size it to this rainbow, right? So oops, what just happened here? I'm gonna undo it really quickly just to get back to my previous screen. Okay, let's talk about sizing for a second. Um, maybe I'll resize, okay. Let me move Matthew for a second down here so that we can see it. It really doesn't matter what the size is right now. You wanna size it so that they are proportionate to each other. So let's make this rainbow big so it fits the name Matthew. Something like this, maybe even bigger. Don't worry about how gigantic this is. As long as Matthew fits with this, then we're good. Now, if you remember, our white is one offset, right? So let's do another offset. So everything has three layers. So here's our white piece. Let's duplicate it. And let's unlock it and make it a little bit bigger, right? And we're gonna put it behind. Arrange, send to the back. And let's make that last layer the gray, okay? So, if you really wanna give this layers, then we have two offsets, the white and the gray, right? So we want the name to be part of this too. So what I would do is I would take Matthew this last layer and just duplicate it. And give me a second, let's put this one back. And what I would do is, I would grab Matthew and group it together so that it moves as one piece. So when we resize something, all three layers get resized, okay? Okay, so if we like it like this, this is what I would do. So put math, that back layer of Matthew back what we want is that back layer, hit the shift key, and grab this outermost gray layer. Did I grab it? No, I didn't. Okay, hold on. Oh, here's our gray layer, right? And then we want, hit the shift key and grab this one. This is our back layer of Matthew, and we're gonna weld it. So this gives us our back layer of our cake topper. You see it includes the name, so everything sits on top of it, right? So let's get rid of these little cutouts, go to contour, same thing, hide all, and then we have a solid back layer, okay? And then, um, let me make it smaller so that we don't have to scroll back and forth. Arrange, send to the back. So let's talk about all our layers right now. We have our backmost offset, then we're gonna have our white kind of sitting on top, and then we're gonna have all our rainbow colors sitting on the white, and then the name, we're gonna have those three layers sitting on top of the rainbow. So you're gonna have a lot of depth and dimension here. Okay, all we have left is to add the clouds. So here's our little thing. Let's go to images and let's search for clouds. And let's bring in a few shapes because we don't want it to look so uniform, right? So, and we want free ones. 
So let's click, and I don't like flat bottom clouds. I know. <laughs> a little bit of a diva right now. Okay, let's click on this one, this one, and maybe this one. Okay, we'll insert it. Now these are all the way in the back, and it's gonna be slightly, it's gonna be a lot covered by these by the rainbow and the name, so don't worry about the actual shape. Let's change, we do want all of these. Let's see. Let's ungroup it so they're not stacked like that. Um, so all these clouds, this one, let's ungroup it. And this one, we're gonna ungroup. Okay, so I'm sort of just putting it like this. I'm gonna grab these three clouds. And you see, that was just randomly picking them. I know I kind of want it to be behind like this. So maybe move this, make this one a little bit bigger and move it like this. Cause I want like, I don't want any um, gaps, okay? So I'm gonna grab these three clouds, hit the shift key and grab all three. First of all, I'm gonna change it to white, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna weld it. Oh no, you know what? I don't wanna weld it. I'm gonna, uh, no, I don't wanna weld it. Okay, let's grab these three items and send to the back. So that's what my, I think this is sitting too low. I'm gonna move it up a little bit. Maybe move this up as well. And then move. Maybe I need one more cloud here even. Or I could just do this. Unlock it. There. So you see all the layers that you can get? I mean, I don't like that. Hold on. And maybe make unlock this one. There. So this is going to give me a lot of layers, and it's going to look fabulous. Um, and it's still simple. So change all your different cardstock. I mean, obviously, once you go to make it, it's going to look so much prettier because cardstock in person is so much prettier than than in what you see in design space. But I hope this was helpful. You can even bring in a one. If you bring in a one, I would layer it. I wouldn't do just a single one. I would do, you know, at least two layers and have it kind of sit here and it'll look great. Or you could, you know, have the candle be one. All right, I hope that was helpful. Let me know what you think. If you wanna see more like this, I will see you next time. If you wanna send me a file specific to do a tutorial, it's an, A-N, at the uselesscrafter.com. Bye.